So the question is whether the total eosinophil count is the most important thing to look at. And my short answer to that is absolutely not. Um, the number of eosinophils in any particular biopsy has to be taken in light of all of the other uh, features of the uh, microscopic evaluation of that part of the gut. So in the esophagus and the stomach and the small intestine and the colon, there are normal features of the, um, those structures that uh, may be co totally intact, even though there are eosinophils in, in excess uh, compared to normal. On the other hand, eosinophils may be causing damage to the surface lining structures of any of those uh, organs. And in that situation, the number of eosinophils is um, only a portion of the information that's available. The description of the injury to the crypts and the glands and the surface epithelium uh, is just as important or more important than the actual number of eosinophils. The assessment of patients who have eosinophilic diseases initiates with an endoscopic biopsy. And they can be performed for two reasons. One is a part of a research protocol in which very strict criteria are used to assess whether disease may be present or not. In other circumstances, when we're caring for patients within our uh, general practices, we'll use not only an eosinophil count or a biopsy result, but also the symptoms, the uh, appearance of the endoscope of the uh, lining of the esophagus, perhaps x-ray tests and blood tests to determine whether additional treatments need to be used or not. As I, you know, I have been doing this disease since 1994. So in a way, I have grown up with this disease. And uh, so I bring a perspective that may be a little different and uh, this is how this disease was initially defined as number of eosinophils and initially it was 15, some people were using 20, some were using 24. And how we came to any of those numbers is anybody guesses. Uh, but right now we have settled on 15. Uh, what is to say it is going to be 10 or 12 or 20. But, uh, and I think uh, we may be looking at a very myopic view of diagnosing a condition by just looking at the number of eosinophils that we actually need to broaden the horizon and look at the other things that can happen like eosinophilic degranulation, eosinophilic clumping, eosinophilic layering in the esophagus, eosinophilic abscesses, lamina propria fibrosis, basal cell hyperplasia, vascular papillary elongation. I know that's a lot of terms, but those are all the things we see on a biopsy in a patient with eosinophilic esophagitis or EJITS. So should we be looking at beyond just the eosinophil count? In our studies, we have used a scoring system where we have looked at many of these criteria. The problem is that when you really look at a biopsy, it's not black and white. It's how the biopsy is cut and put on a slide, the tissue, that some of these criteria are visible all the time and some are not visible hardly ever. And of all of these criteria, the eosinophil count is pretty much the only among the few things that is always dependable to be counted on a biopsy. The basal cell hyperplasia, the vascular papillary elongation, the lamina propria fibrosis, some of the other terms I talk, talked about may be seen sometimes, may not be seen sometimes, depending on how the tissue is oriented. So yes, we should be looking beyond that. How easy or practical it will be, I think it's, there are some challenges there. <laughs>